Hi, I'm Father Chris Alar of the Marian Fathers here at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy, and welcome again to Living Divine Mercy here on EWTN as we talk about God's most important attribute, mercy. Now, we left off last week with Vinnie Flynn talking about the importance of confession, but as expected, we only got through four of the seven secrets. So today, we want to take you back to our conversation with Vinny to hear about secrets five, six, and seven. It's something you don't want to miss. We are We were honored enough to have Vinny come back with us to finish the seven secrets of confession. And the reason why is as we are approaching Lent, as we said last week, it is so important for us to be able to receive this grace God wants to give, this grace of confession. So let us dive in to the secrets where we left off. Number five, you tell us, is you've got mail. Vinny, do you still have AOL? Is that what you <laughs> No, <laughs> no, but that, that's where it came from, though, from that whole thing. And I, I did that partially for the shock value of having people say, huh? Yes. But just to get the attention. When I go to confession, Christ isn't forgiving me then in the confessional. Mm. He forgave me from the cross 2,000 years ago. And this ago. is what non-Catholics always tell us. Yes, yes. The whole idea that it's a done deal. Christ died once for all. All people, all sin, all time, he died once. So my sins, God from the cross forgave sins that I haven't even committed yet because he saw it all. He's God. So so this whole eternal now thing, God isn't subject to time. So Jesus on the cross sees past, present, and future because he's God all at once, yes. instantly. <clears throat> so 2,000 years ago, Christ looked, looked down from the cross. He looked out over 2,000 years of time and space, saw my sins, and loved me. My sin didn't change him, as we talked about in the, in the but first But then, Vinny, why do we need confession? We need confession because we talked again in the first thing. that we, we, Sin doesn't change God. It changes me. I need confession mm -hmm. because sin has changed me. Mm -hmm. So my sins have been forgiven, but I need healing of my relationship with, with, with And I God. think another thing that you pointed out in our conversations outside of the, the uh, show was the fact that, yes, Christ merited that on the cross, but now in the confessional, I'm going to receive that grace. Right. So it's not just that God gave us or merited that on the cross, but we need to I hate to use the term, but to go to receive it, to collect, we are now going to receive that grace right. in the confessional. That's It's kind of like Christ did it on the cross, but where we receive it is in that confessional. Right. Yes. Right. What he did then affects me now. It's the same with the Eucharist. When I go to receive the Eucharist, I'm receiving then... The, all of the benefits of Christ's death on the cross. When I go into the confessional, I'm accessing now all the forgiveness and healing that Christ won for me on the cross. So that's why I use this term of you've got mail. Well, and what caused me to think of it that way is that when, when this whole internet thing first started happening, and when I remember when I first got started getting email, my brother emailed me from Japan. But I hadn't been going online for a while. So it was like two or three weeks later that I went online, and then I saw his email. So I was receiving it then, but he had done it before. Exactly. Where, where, was, where was his message? It was out in cyberspace somewhere. Yeah. So I logged on. I pushed the right buttons. And, collected. and then I heard, you've got mail. <laughs> well, now I can, I can read it, print it, download it, because I've fully accessed it. And now be healed by it. Right. Because so, you're in the confessional. So basically, the image I like to use is that Christ on the cross emailed me all the forgiveness and healing I will ever need. All the forgiveness for all my sins, all the healing I will ever need. It's there waiting for me in some kind of spiritual cyberspace. When I go into the confessional, I'm logging on my computer. And you're opening the mail. I'm opening my <laughs> mail, and now I'm receiving it, you know? I have to go into the confessional. I have to repent of my sins. I have to confess my sin. That's, that's logging on. That's, that's accessing 
what Christ has already given. And Vinny, if I could add to this, one of the points that you had made regarding the secret, again, we're talking about Vinny's book, Seven Secrets of Confession. Um, one of the important points you make, and the reason I bring it up is because I made it in my book, so it's confirmation for me, is the fact that God being outside of time, that everything that we do, good or bad now, affected Jesus. In fact, he told St. Faustina that your prayers and the prayers of religious helped get me through the agony in the garden. Well, how is this possible? He lived 1,900 years before St. Faustina because this concept that God is outside of time. So it works both ways. It works both Just ways. Just as God's grace from 2,000 years ago on the cross can help us today, never forget that every act of sin or virtue and love that you do today can either weigh down Christ's cross, make it heavier on his passion if we are living in sin, or we can be like Simon the Cyrene and help lift that cross of Christ with every act of love and virtue. Is this not, uh, yes. is this not correct? Yes. I'm, I'm reminded of, of uh, the whole Fatima story with little Francisco. when he, After the apparitions, he would spend so much time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And when he was asked, this young boy asked why he was doing that, his answer was to console God oh. because he sensed that he could console Christ, yeah. you know, and, and that's, that's the whole, everything I do, every action I do either consoles Christ yes. or pushes another thorn into his head. At the time of the passion? At the time of his passion. Because God is outside of What time. I do yeah. now affects him then. What he did now, what he did then affects, affects me. me now. How beautiful. It is and that, beautiful. that's an incredible concept. So let's continue, Vinny, with the sixth secret. New wine needs new skins. Now, I know I've heard that in Scripture. How does it apply to the sacrament of confession? <laughs> Initially, what I always thought about confessional is I, I just got to go get this behavior uh, forgiven. And so the priest will wave his hands over me, give me absolution. Now I'm all better. I go into confession. Oh, I'm now clean again. I feel upbeat. But if I don't have a purpose of amendment, if I don't have that desire to reorient, then I'm just going to fall right back. Now, if you do, that's okay. We, we, we've always said, just go back to confession. But if you get frustrated with those recurring sins, look at the fact that are are you changing? Are you reorienting? Are you? And this is, I think, the message of secret number six is that we need to do something new. We need yes. a new wineskin to be able to do something that's going to change what I've done in the past. And right. God's grace, and people say, well, Father, it's impossible. I can't stop drinking. I can't stop viewing pornography. I just can't stop. Okay, as Jesus said in the scriptures, yes, on your own, you can't. It's impossible. But with God and his grace, it's all possible. Yes, absolutely. It's this, this whole idea of change as growth. Well, I need to grow in my relationship with, with God. The only real sign of growth is change, if you think about it. Yeah. So I go into the confessional to change. I want to become better in my relationship with God. And that's the new wine. It's, confession is about new life, about you know reorienting, refocusing on, on what this is all about. And part of that is the whole the whole penance thing. It's like, you know, it's so easy to think of penance as a punishment. St. John Paul, Paul II says, uh, it's not a punishment. It's not paying your dues. It's not a price you pay for bad behavior. The catechism teaches it's a matter of helping you develop further maturity and healing. It's to continue the healing process of the confessional. Pope John Paul again says, even after forgiveness in the confessional, a dark area remains. Yes, my sins have been forgiven, but there's something still there, a tendency. Or an attachment. Or an attachment. And so what do we do about that? Penance is to help us get through that, help us change our attitudes, make different decisions, you know, really focus on our relationship with God. The whole purpose of a sacrament is to give grace there are times when I go to confession, I'm not even conscious of a serious sin. I just know the grace. I need I need grace because things aren't quite right. And once I get into the confessional and pray about it to the Holy Spirit, 
I find sin that I didn't wasn't thinking about, you know. Yeah. So there, there's never a problem with figuring out, you know. Once, yeah, once and, I'm and if you can't think of any of your own, talk to your friends. Yes, exactly. You know, uh, I remind cameraman Giuseppe all the time about areas that he can improve, and he reminds me. Well, that's like Father Kosicki <laughs> used to say to me. We worked very closely together, and he knew what I was working on and everything. And every once in a while, he'd say, "Vinny, how are you doing today?" Ready for an oil change? <laughs> He'd tell me that I needed to go. He would see what you he, did. He could see that things weren't yeah. quite up to snuff. You know? Excellent. And that leads us into our next uh, secret. If Again, we we're talking about Vinny Flynn's book, Seven Secrets of Confession. And the last secret, number seven, Vinny, is you have to let go of your chains. I think this one, when I read your book, was probably the most I got out of it. So talk to us about that. Again, you have to let go of your chains. Yeah, to me, sin is sin is bondage, and we don't realize it. We wound ourselves. We wound other people. We also get, as as you mentioned, we get attracted and addicted to certain things. We are unable to make changes. Well, it's because the whole nature of what sin does, it disfigures us. It separates us from God. It wounds us. Catechism said sin wounds you. And, and in the confession of the Holy Spirit is a physician, that's again that healing image, that the Holy Spirit probes the wounds so he can heal it. That's the function of the, the priest in the confessional. St. Augustine knew it. He says, I'm not there to condemn. I'm not there to punish. I'm there to heal. So that, that whole concept of um, I re need to realize how my sin is binding me and my attitudes are binding me. So I need to get to, let, to let Christ break through those chains. You know, then I get often asked the question, if Jesus came as the Jewish Messiah, why haven't the Jews accepted him as the Messiah? And I always think back to why was it the reason that Judas betrayed Jesus? Because he wasn't the kind of Messiah they expected. They expected an overthrow of Rome, to shackle, to be de-shackled of the chains that Rome was putting on Israel. Um, but what Jesus did was remove a greater chain, yes, sin. Exactly. And so Jesus did free them from bondage, right. just not the kind that Rome was physically placing on them, but a more critical release of that being the spiritual bondage of sin. Right. And so this is what I think you're you're proving here in this in this last secret. Yeah, and that and that we talk about free will and free choice. Well, I, I choose, there are times when in a sense I'm not free to do the right thing because I'm so weighed down yeah. with these chains that my woundedness and sin have hurt me. And that's, I, I think, what we need to realize, too, is that there are things that prevent God, God's love from penetrating and from really changing us and healing us. And I, one of those is that I don't have enough faith. I don't trust enough, you know. And one is that I make other things into God. I make other things, any other ourselves. people. Yeah, I really myself. hear the first commandment being broken, but yet we've probably all broken it. It doesn't mean that I worship Allah or a Buddha. Right. The first commandment can be broken by putting myself on the throne. Yeah. Or even yeah. or even our children, our, our yes. spouses. Yes. You know, even good things, yes. even my work, yes. good things can become too addictive in the yes. sense that I'm making this more important than God. Yeah. Anything that replaces God is an idol. Yes. And so we're all involved in idol worship. Every time we we get more focused on things or people or situations than, than on God. As we said last week, it's taking your eyes off the creator right. and putting it on the creature, the created thing, even if it's not a bad thing. People think, well, it's okay. It's 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 my 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 child or whatnot, but we can in a disordered kind of way. A lot of a lot of our behavior then it, it St. John of the Cross talks about these disordered desires and attachments that we have that we make idols, that what they do is they glue us to ourselves. Yeah. So we need to, to really ask God in the confessional to help us let go of our chains. And to me, two of the biggest chains, one is the father wound, which I think we all have, and the other is unforgiveness. The father wound is, I think we've all been hurt by someone who should have reflected the fatherly love of God to us. Could be an actual father or a mother, a priest, a, a policeman, a teacher, a friend, somebody I needed to reflect God's unconditional tender love, did not, yeah. did not, and it hurt me. And that wound stays in me until it's healed. And we need to take that woundedness into the confessional. 
And the other thing that hurts us more than anything is our unforgiveness. Yeah. As you've mentioned, our unforgiveness doesn't hurt the people we're not forgiving. Yeah. It hurts us. I, I told it's you before the, the show, Vinny, I, yeah. I heard a, a, a very good uh, slow uh, saying that is uh, harboring unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. And that is the danger of unforgiveness. Right. So, and, and I think it's important. And Vinny, I'll finish with this. If our bodies need a bath, so do our souls. And confession is that spiritual bath, that cleansing and healing, education, and all of the above. So Vinny, thank you. God bless you. And we appreciate you being here again. You can get the information down there on your screen. Give us a call, order the book, or find it online. But again, preparing for Lent, there's no better way than to get into the confessional. Thank you again, Vinny, and God bless you. Well, thank you, Vinny. It's always a pleasure to have you on, and we look for more conversations to come in the future. Now, we'd like to introduce you to somebody very special to us Marian Fathers, and that's our very own bishop, Bishop Byrne of the Springfield Diocese here in Massachusetts. Prior to coming here, he was a priest in the Diocese of Washington, D.C., and so we wanted to show you a clip that he had done talking about the importance of confession and something of most importance, how to do it. And we look forward to having him as a guest here on our show for some future episodes. Episodes. So welcome, Bishop Byrne. Confession is nerve-wracking. I know because I feel it myself, and I try to go every single week. But having gone to confession feels great. For me, it's like a workout. I don't love going to work out, but I love having worked out. And here's why confession's so great. Our sin is not who we are. It's actually who we're not. It's the stuff in our lives that holds us back from living our lives most fully. Imagine for a second that you and I are a pipe. And a pipe has one purpose, to get water from one place to another. The water is God's love, the water of our baptism. And that love flows through us out to the world. Sin is the gunk and the clogs that block the flow of the water. And so it is that the water is restricted. We're not living our lives as fully as we can be. Confession is Drano. It blasts away everything that is not the pipe so that that water can flow as freely as God wants it to. Going to confession is actually easier than you imagine. Now I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. The first step before actually going into the confessional is to make an examination of conscience. Look to see the times when you haven't responded to the blessings as fully as you could. Outside of most confessionals, there are two lights, a green light and a red light. A green light means that the priest is hearing confessions, but that there's no one actually going to confession at that time. A red light means that the priest is in the confessional hearing someone's confession. So just wait a moment and your turn will be next. If you prefer to go anonymously, then you come and you kneel down and tell your confession to the priest through the screen. He can't see you, but you can still talk to each other freely. If you prefer to make your confession face to face, simply walk around and be seated and begin. Now, how do you go to confession? It's really easy. First, you make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Say these words, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been, and then tell the priest how long it's been since you've been to confession. If you don't know or you can't remember, just tell the priest it's been a really long time and I'm not sure when I went last. Then, if you're nervous and you're not sure what to do, just tell the priest. Say, I'm not sure what to do, I'd like some help. Now list your sins. I always think it's best to start with the things that bother you the most. Get them off your chest first. Then once you've said the sort of big ticket items, then you can name the other things, the habits, the tendencies that you have, the things that pull you down. After that, the priest is, will give you some advice, some spiritual practices, something to think about or pray about. Finally, the priest will give you a penance, some prayers to say after you've gone to confession. Then the priest will give you absolution. With these words, the confession is ended. Go and enjoy the forgiveness of Christ. It's so much easier than you think.
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. The Psalms reveal the depth of God's merciful love, for they show how His mercy applies to individuals and their spiritual struggles, not just to Israel as a group. In Psalm 51, King David cries out to the Lord for forgiveness and moral regeneration. Cleanse me from my sin, he cries. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. This is not a prayer for the nation's prosperity. David is not saying, forgive me, Lord, so that we can once again enjoy all the temporal blessings of the covenant with you, including peace, prosperity, and progeny. Rather, this is a plea for the restoration of his moral and spiritual health. He asks, restore me to the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. While God is ever mindful of our need for material goods to sustain us, He cares even more that we tend to the health of our souls. Each of us needs an ongoing spiritual renewal to grow ever closer to Him and be prepared to receive the gift of eternal life. Well, thank you, Novice Joseph, for reading Psalm 51, one of my personal favorites, because it's so powerful about forgiveness. Now, let's talk to Brother Elliot as he tells us about his own story regarding confession. I originally was discerning with the diocesan priesthood um, with a friend who helped me to discern with them. And I ended up going to Franciscan University and I was in a setting that allowed me to discern my vocation. They had a, what they call uh, a household and this was a priestly discernment program which was, consisted of a bunch of men together living in prayer and fraternity. And it was very conducive to priestly discernment and through that fraternal setting, I felt uh, a call towards the priesthood and also the religious life. And it was great also witnessing the presence of religious on campus. That was very vital for me. The Marians are great uh, insofar as their charism consists of uh, the uh, devotion to the Immaculate Conception. Our Lady is such, such a good example for us, and imitating her virtues, uh, she'll never lead, lead us astray. Yeah, Divine Mercy has been super important to me. Growing up, I wasn't, wasn't always the saint that, you know, we're all called to be. I lived a re very rebellious life, and, you know, coming to the church, uh, it was a process, you know, it wasn't something that took place overnight. Um, but really what, what stirred in my heart was going to a retreat and feeling the love of God uh, for the first time. And I think a big part of that was going to confession and receiving the Lord's mercy. And through that, just so much cleansing and healing that took place. So mercy has been so vitally important to me and helping me to, to be purified of my sins. Trust to me, I would say, is kind of like abandonment to divine providence. It's uh, turning our own um, wants and desires and just surrendering them to the Lord and letting Him do whatever he wills and, and that can be scary for so so many of us and oftentimes we can grow in our trust um, sometimes we might be hesitant you know just as say like it, you know if, if you have a, a father in the swimming pool and he says come to me and sometimes we might 
you know, be hesitant, but when you when you trust and you you just jump to him, knowing that he, he's going to provide for you, that you're not going to drown. And that's similar to what our Lord does, you know, with Peter, come to me, you know. So I think, you know, trust is, yeah, again, just a total abandonment, uh, whatever that may look like. Today, the Lord said to me, Daughter, when you go to confession, to this fountain of my mercy, the blood and water which came forth from my heart always flows down upon your soul and ennobles it. Every time you go to confession, immerse yourself entirely in my mercy with great trust, so that I may pour the bounty of my grace upon your soul. When you approach the confessional, know this that I myself am waiting there for you. I am only hidden by the priest, but I myself act in your soul. Here, the misery of the soul meets the God of mercy. Tell souls that from this fount of mercy, souls draw graces solely with the vessel of trust. If their trust is great, there is no limit to my generosity. The torrents of grace inundate humble souls. The proud remain always in poverty and misery because my grace turns away from them to humble souls. Well, thank you everybody for joining us for these shows on confession and their importance in helping us to prepare for Lent, which begins next week. So join us on Wednesday as we talk about Ash Wednesday and what you need to know about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Now, in the meantime, please become a member of our Marian family. It takes but a second, doesn't cost anything, but you can visit us at micprayers.org and start receiving many graces of our masses, prayers, rosaries, chaplets, and much more. And until then, may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>